Again, my name is Richard Hill with the PPI Group. Uh, we're going to be uh, tag teaming this presentation, Derek with uh, Derek White with CAD Zone, and uh, basically this is kind of a quick little uh, live demonstration of a particular type of laser scanner. In this presentation, we'll be showing the FerroFocus 3D system, the same as the two different presenters uh, we're talking about uh, before. So, uh, with that being said, we'll move forward. So there's a lot of information. Uh, this is only one day, and one day seems like a lot, but when you're talking about workflows and equipment and options and different computers or things like that, there's a lot to go over uh, with any, any profession, really. So with laser scanning, I'll be touching on basically a workflow, but of course, this has been refined over the last couple years, and, and uh, the main thing is I want to do it live so you guys don't see um, canned just all canned data and presentations and PowerPoints. So that's what I want to touch on and have Derek actually work with live data for you guys. Of course, I've been in uh, land surveying uh, for a while. I did five years of land surveying. I was in the Army for six years as a communication specialist. So I've, I kind of, uh, I haven't been in law enforcement, but I've definitely uh, speak the, the language a little bit. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so in knowing that, um, I got into laser scanning about three years ago, so I've been just working on, at first I was way too technical, getting into the nuts and bolts and getting way into stuff and actually overselling and making it so the equipment was too technical. And so since then I've been working on workflows to actually uh, make it simpler and make it more, uh, a more defined workflow. So actually in your guys' evaluation sheets, what we're doing uh, from this point on is we're going to try to uh, start a, uh, a user group, as we've mentioned here a couple times, but if you want to be involved with that user group, uh, go ahead and check that box and we'll, we'll add whoever wants to do that to a database that we're going to start getting people connected. The best route to do that, we still haven't yet determined whether or not a law enforcement agency will head that up, like uh, uh, maybe Oregon State or, or um, you know, uh, somebody that has the initiative to do that or if it'll be one of the vendors like us. Uh, but the, the whole thing is getting the ball rolling, connecting the right people, and then adding to that but also keeping it secure so you guys can really have a forum and stuff that's about laser scanning that uh, connects everybody but keeps you safe too. So. The PPI group, we, we have been around since 1927 in Oregon and Washington, and we cover ni northern Idaho into uh, Coeur d'Alene and um, Spokane area and stuff as well. But we sell everything from robot, robots, uh, so what you're normally used to using with a total station or a robot or GPS, we sell those. But we also get into laser scanning, and we are, we're also an Autodesk house, so we, we also have several people, about 10 people, that all they do is sell AutoCAD, Civil 3D, Revit, all that stuff for AEC and MEP markets and stuff so we have about 35 employees throughout the Northwest that we cover and basically do all these different markets but really if you boil it down to PPI is a measurement uh, solutions uh, shop essentially so whatever you need to measure we're, we should be able to help you out with that and we have experts that have been in the industry to help you with that. So I've done my PPI spiel, uh, so you guys have heard that. So now I can get into actually working with the equipment and stuff. And uh, you guys can, uh, uh, the main thing is moving forward, you know to contact us if you have any questions about the user group, <coughs> workflows, equipment, newest technologies, anything like that, you can just let us know. And we, uh, we try to keep a pulse on that constantly. So uh, there's a couple different models that I'll talk about today, and there's big differences between them, but whether or not they apply to your guys' workflows, that's the real question. So the one that I have sitting up here is the Ferro Focus 3D 120. The 120 is basically for the distance. 120 meters is what it's rated to actually scan at. Any more than that, and it actually filters out the data and doesn't collect anything longer than that because it's not really, it's built to scan within that. So it works great for local scenes, crimes, and crash scenes, but if you're trying to reach out and do an outside topography or line work or a DTM or a 10 surface generation, uh, it's, it's easier to get a little bit dis further distance. So the crazy, the great part about this sensor itself is it's actually phase based. So it's not time of flight. 
So in phase based, it actually sends out a wave of light versus a pulse of light. So a lot of scanners out there will actually send out individual pulses, individual shots, if you will. Getting a, uh, if anybody's ever used a reflectorless total station, it's the same kind of technology. When we're shooting a pulse, we're hitting an object, getting a return, and we can create an XYZ position for that, that spot where it hit that object on the ground or vehicle or body or what have you. Um, so with this, we're sending out a wave of light, so it collects a lot more data a lot quicker. So as we're, um, um, and once we set up to scan, we can do a, um, about 11, minute, uh, 11 million points in just about a minute and a half because we're sending out that wave and collecting tons of information. So with this particular scanner itself, uh, it's all built in, all inclusive. So that's what's so huge about this system. You don't need to have a laptop connected to it or external power sources or anything of that sort uh, like uh, some other laser scanners you've had to do. So it's all all inclusive, it's all touch screen, so if you've ever used a smartphone or a tablet or anything like that, you have everything built on, so you just go through the touch screen manuals, or uh, menus. Integrated color camera, like Bobby was saying, it's, it's something that's very helpful for situational awareness to tell what you're looking at, but you also want to incorporate your, your normal methods of using a, a, a handheld camera, you know, to collect your evidence, high close-ups, but this is going to give you a great situational awareness of each position where you scanned, and show you exactly what you scanned. Um, uh, high performance battery, so you get about four and a half to five hours of life with the battery that's on the system. So even though it's doing all that stuff, you still can collect um, about 25 to 30 scans on a single battery if that's all you're doing is scanning. Um, depending on your resolution, of course. Um, it's all stored to an SD card that's actually inside the device here. The, this one currently has a 32 gigabyte SD card. It's all stored right to that, so you just throw it into your laptop after you're done, and I'll show you that here uh, shortly. Um, so think, I like to consider this system basically like a, a higher end camera. We're basically collecting point cloud data, but we're also collecting um, imagery, and we're storing it all to an SD card. So uh, while I talk about the other sensors, I'm gonna just start getting this scanning and get it going here. And uh, we'll see me in the scans, of course. But uh, once you have your preferences and your job site or your, uh, your project name set up, then all you need to do is hit start scan and it always remembers the last settings that you use. So if you have a list of settings that you like to use, just like on your phone, uh, you basically just use those every time and you just hit the green button once you're ready to go. Um, there are several sensors built into here, like a compass is built in. So every time you take a scan, it's gonna orientate your data to north within a degree or so. It has a built-in um, altimeter, so it's actually gonna get a rough a reading of your altitude as well while you're actually picking up uh, your scan location. So if you have several different elevations, like two floors of a building, and you look at just the raw data, it actually will be able to tell you, even though it hasn't been registered yet, it'll show you the scans at the different levels um, for the different elevations and the different floors and stuff. It has a built-in dual axis compensator. So a lot of people, if they've ever used total stations, they know what uh, dual X and Y compensation is for. It's basically to help us obtain a level surface for our instrument, and it actually compensates for that on the fly. So right now I'm doing the Faro dance, as Bobby called it. Uh, I'm staying out of the data so I don't add additional noise of myself in the point cloud itself. So I basically just stay on the side of the scanner while it's collecting information. Um, so uh, getting back to the sensors, the dual compensation will actually read uh, while you're scanning. So the great part is you actually don't have to have this level. You just have to have it within five degrees and it will automatically compens compensate for that and adjust your scan data to a level plane. Uh, that's extremely helpful because a lot of times when you do traditional total station occupied back site setups, you'll set up over a point, measure down, make sure you're exactly level, shoot an occupy or a back site point and ensuring that you get that baseline angle to start working from. And then once you've done that, then you can start shooting your points and turning your angles and shooting your distances and stuff. With this, it works differently. You set it up wherever is best to collect and to see everything. And then you can collect everything you want and then you reference your targets, whether they're checkerboard targets or spheres, um, to uh, merge or or register your scans together. So the workflow that I'm gonna to show today is essentially uh, 
two scans, collecting both scans uh, within the same room, but we're not going to use targets at all. We're just going to use um, hard targets, if you will, or the walls and things like that to collect. So all I need to do is hit the green button to start scanning again and uh, collect our second position. So I'll let that go. Uh, the last thing is Wi-Fi. So a lot of times you're in a situation where it's just crazy traffic along the highway or something. You set up your scanner and you can control the scanner, um, the keyboards and everything. You can control it remotely because the inside the scanner itself, it has a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot. So you don't require an additional router or anything. It basically has it all built in. So all I need to do on my computer, once I turn on Wi-Fi in that, in the scanner, is connect up to the Wi-Fi network for that is the serial number of that scanner. Once I've done that, then I can start, my, start and stop my scans remotely. I can change my settings, set up my projects, change my unit and some measurements, everything that you could do on board. Um, you can do straight from the, the laptop, from your smartphone, from a tablet, whatever you want to, as long as it can run Flash. So no Apple products, of course. So that's, I know. <laughs> so <laughs> they are working on that, but not running Flash is a big change. It's like rewriting. Oh, there goes, there goes Sergeant Nakarada. <laughs> We know the Apple lovers in here, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Wi-Fi is huge. A lot of times in other industries, they'll crank it up into drop paneling, so they want to scan the rafters or things like that, and they'll just start and stop their scans remotely. If you have a site where it's down in a ravine or something, and the, the ground is crumbling, you set up the tripod, and you don't want to walk around the tripod while it's scanning and in introduce additional distortion in the data, you basically just walk away, get away from the scanner, and then start it remotely. Another situation is if you want to scan in a room and kind of close it off, keep everybody out there, you just can start it remotely with your, your tablet or your, uh, or your uh, Android or Windows phone. So. <laughs> uh, so that in a nutshell is the hardware itself. Uh, so bouncing into the model, I wasn't going to talk too much about uh, specific models and stuff, but uh, since the user conference, a lot of people have mentioned the new model of the Ferro Focus 3D. Uh, so this is the X330. So the 330 is stands, stands for 330 meters, essentially. So it's a longer range system. What does that mean for you guys? Interior, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's basically, uh, you're going to be able to scan longer and, or further distances, but uh, um, outside for topography crashes and stuff, you'll be able to reach out and touch further of the road. So it really depends on which one uh, is more applicable for your applications. If you're all crash, then of course, the longer range would be the one you try to consider. The secondary consideration of this system is the first one is 46,000 list price. The, um, the X330 is 58,000 lift price. So you're looking at a $12,000 jump for that longer range. The other uh, advantage to this scanner versus the other one is still phase based so it still sends out that wave of light but this scanner is actually uh, eye safe so the first laser scanner and a lot of other laser scanners have like class 3 lasers which are visible beams or they're invisible but they still have the chance of hurting your eye if you're real close to the scanner and staring right into it this one actually has an eye safe laser so no matter what no matter what you do it's never going to actually have the potential of hurting someone's eye now with that, I would argue this scanner over here, um, it moves so fast, you're never, it's like me taking this laser pointer right now and shining it around the room. It would never hurt anybody's eye because it's moving, uh, uh, the scanner is actually moving faster than I could ever move this laser. But uh, if I was to take it and focus it on one spot for quite a while, like your eye there, then there's the potential of burning your retina after a while and actually damaging it. That's how this laser scanner is. It moves so fast that the, the potential is, is not really there to actually damage, but it's something that has to be labeled on the scanner and stuff. All laser scanners have some potential of that. It's just more of knowing the equipment and knowing uh, when to put up a little sign saying scanning in progress or something. But it goes back to the safety of the tripod. A lot of times you want to put something on that tripod so people don't kick it. So a lot of times just put a radioactive sign on there or something, you know, <laughs> to keep people away from it because you don't want them touching it and you don't want them close because you you don't want them in that eye safety distance too. So usually it's about uh, six to eight feet uh, out. You don't want people within that because um, you're going to scan them anyways. So try to keep people, we just keep coming to, back to this, keep people away from the scanner while it's working type thing. 
So this has basically a lot of the other components, the added component of this laser scanner, and it's a little distorted for the text, sorry about that, but it has built-in GPS as well. So it actually gets a, and when we say GPS, uh, it's lo a lot like our phones. It's not accurate down to survey grade five hundredths of a foot or half an inch. It's accurate within a meter or so. So how does that help you? If you're outside doing a crash scene and you want to throw your data into Google Earth and you want it to be overlay, uh, uh, fairly close to lat long and ellipsoidal height coordinates just in the real world. Um, this will have a starting position for the scanner itself that's within a meter or so of the actual position on, on in the real world. So you'll have your compass reading for the heading and then you'll also have your um, your GPS and your altimeter will work together to give you a position that's roughly accurate within you know the size of a beach ball or something or maybe twice that size, but it'll get you on the right side of the road in the right spot. And uh, so that's very helpful for a lot of times if you don't care about a coordinate system, but it's nice to overlay on a map uh, from Google or Bing, then this helps you get that, that one step further without any really other work on your part, trying to translate and rotate and move objects and stuff. And uh, let's see, I think that's, that's it for that. Okay, so with that being said, I've got my two scans that are collected over here. So all I need to do is uh, eject the SD card out of the scanner here and take it over to my laptop. And I'll, you always need a computer with a card reader. Um, I appreciate uh, Ron Potts and Curtis uh, with their presentation because uh, a computer is really important with this process. It's two parts, your scanner, but then also how you're going to work with the data. And if you have a computer that runs DOS still or something like that, or, or even if it's running Windows XP, that's not the latest technologies for your number of bits, uh, like 64, like pretty much, and it says on the brochures and everything, so if you guys get a brochure, it'll say require minimum requirements for the software. But it's basically Windows 7, 64-bit. You want at least eight gigs of RAM to operate with. You want uh, a graphics card that's within the last couple years that's uh, a discrete or an independent graphics card is better. And there's little upgrades from there, like dual cores, solid state hard drives, things like that, that increase your production time. Uh, like uh, what Ron was saying is it just like having 32 gigs instead of 8 gigs like tripled his time. Well, of course it will, but there's a cost associated with that. And the software will still run at lower specifications for your laptop or your desktop, but it won't, it's not absolutely required. So... Are you putting that card in an Apple product? Yeah, I'm just curious. <laughs> This is a MacBook Pro. <laughs> this is a MacBook Pro that's three years old, actually. So I'm, it hasn't died yet. I keep waiting it for it to die, and it keeps going. So, <laughs> uh, but I'm running Boot Camp, and I'm running Windows 7 64-bit on it. So that's why you see Windows here um, with uh, what you're normally used to if you were seeing that. Yeah, I know. I get that all the time. That's a scan of myself, of course. So if you guys need a LinkedIn image, there you go. Just scan yourself and you'll be set. We'll just use yours. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> just use mine, yeah. So uh, all you need to do is go into the SD card, look within the scans folder, and we have two scans. And I named it with uh, forensics and then the date. And then it numbers the scans according to the sequence that they were collected. So I just copy and paste those to my desktop. And then uh, the software that I'm going to be showing today is uh, called Autodesk Recap. So my main focus in my job is to always look at new equipment, new softwares, develop new workflows. And so what I showed you three months ago may be different than what I show you today. So there is a software called um, Ferrocene that people have talked about today. And uh, let me create a new project. We'll just call it today's date. And I'm going to select, here's the two scans that we collected right here. I'm just going to throw them into a folder here real quick. And we'll just call it today's date as well. Okay, I put 16, but it's the 6th. Nobody panic. Um, all 
All right, so I'm gonna, I can either select individual scans or a folder that contains all of the scans. So I'm gonna select a folder and select that folder and hit open. Now it automatically recognizes the scans themselves. And if there was color, it would automatically colorize them too. So that takes a little bit more time. So instead of uh, the 30 seconds or a minute per scan that it's going to take with no color, it would take uh, maybe two minutes per scan um, instead. But it's all automated. So I literally just start the process and let it go. Um, and it all depends on the density of data, so how many points you collected, and uh, whether or not you have the color or not. There's a couple different factors that will uh, increase or decrease this time. And of course, your computer speed will affect that as well. But uh, the reason I'm showing the Autodesk recap software is because of the main reason that it's very quick and it's very easy, but it has a real defined workflow. But it also, at the same time, it also has a real quick export that I can just throw the data right into the CAD zone software as a PTS file. If you've ever worked with a point file or an ASCII file, I'm just gonna take the point cloud, decimate it, and uh, throw them together or register them, and then export them for Derek to start using. Of course, that takes a few minutes extra, and we're trying to move this along, so we just threw, um, I'll basically show you the process, and then he can play with the scan that we collected during lunch, basically. His, his software only took about uh, 10 seconds to import it, but when you pass stuff back and forth from different computers, that adds a few <coughs> minutes too. So you can actually see the scan, the first scan from a bubble view. So think of it kind of like Google Street View, if you will. We're looking at the, the full dome of data that was collected from a top-down view, and it's actually showing us that bubble view. So once both of these are done, then we can actually register them, and all we need to do is define a couple points within the scans that are likeness, and it'll actually stitch them together automatically for us using the whole cloud as registration tools versus in just a, a few targets. So a lot of people may argue, I want to have very precise coordinates on individual targets, but I'm only going to have three or four targets. Well, there's a lot of things that go into that when you're talking about accuracy of how accurately are you stitching two scans together. Um, it really depends on your targets, how well you shot them in, how well they were placed, how well your geometry of those targets were. Um, there's several different things. If they were all on the, on the same plane, like I set up all my targets at eye level, that's going to affect it in 3D space. So a lot of those things affect it, where I want to have them all over, where this software, the way it does things um, with cloud-to-cloud -cloud registration is it's using the entirety of the cloud to register your data and using planar surfaces and things like that to stitch them together. So um, this is almost done here. All right, so then I click register scans, and then I wait a couple more seconds. That's the only thing with doing live data uh, um, demonstrations is sometimes you have to wait a few seconds in between, but you guys will see this isn't a time study. This is true to life, live, live data. So once we've collected one of them, we have a view or a preview of the data that was collected here. So this, this is not an image at all. This is actually scan data, and this is a low resolution scan. This is only about 11 million points to represent that environment. So you're seeing 11 million points right now that are basically uh, in the correct spatial position. Um, so if I was to zoom in, for example, on Derek over here. Oh my God, the scanner does add 10 minutes. That's only because you knew me for so long. <laughs> So if you're, sorry to pick on you here, Derek. No. <laughs> He's got thick skin, so it's all right. Uh, really thick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the whole idea is you see pixels here, but really it's points, and it's the spacing of the points. So if we did a higher resolution scan, the pixels would be closer together. So then we'd have a clearer definition of, of Derek here. And, uh, or any objects that you actually scan. So the further the way, uh, further away, of course, you'll um, you'll see a higher, um, larger size of the pixels because it's basically doing gap filling in between. So a low resolution scan equals more pixels um, or larger pickle pixels. <laughs> pickles, <laughs> getting tongue tied here. All right. So 
uh, we also have a top-down view. So this shows us right away that we can see all the red dots or the red lines are actually surfaces that it found in the data automatically that we're going to use in our registration process to actually stitch our scans together or register them. So I just click the next bus button and as you can see this is basically just stair-stepping you through the process. Um, they've put a lot of thought and money and effort into the software and I'm, I'm, that's why I'm showing it today is because I feel right today this is the software to use with the system. The other softwares w absolutely work. They are like there is actually a software that comes with the laser scanner that I could show you but it's uh, several steps and it does not do cloud to cloud registration. It, you have to use targets to, to stitch them together at this phase at least. Um, but once you see this, you see one scan over here and then the secondary scan over here. So all we need to do is basically determine a couple points either from the, the planimetric view or from the image view. So we could zoom around and look at something like the, um, the projector here or the corner of the wall and we just pick two points that are similar within a meter or so just roughly we just pick two points that are similar in both scans and that gives us a couple points of reference to actually uh, register your scans together so what I'm going to do is pick the exit sign in this scan and I'll pick the exit sign in this scan and then I'll pick uh, let's just say the back wall on the edge of the wall back there just roughly and I'll do the same from this scan and I can zoom in and out of course but I'll just roughly pick that area and then I'll pick the top door of the far left door so once I've done at least three from the the that view it will then take what you can see here is those red lines and it colorizes them per scan location and shows you a blue line and a yellow line the blue line and the yellow line indicate different scan locations so if you had 20 or 36 scans, you would essentially go through and merge one to the next and another one to the next and another one to the next. So if you were going to scan this room plus the hallway out there, you'd want to scan at least four locations in here um, to get good coverage of everything and all the evidence. And then you do a scan in the doorway. So that way we're getting all the walls this way and also the walls in the hallway. And then we do all our scans out in the hallway. So we call that a, a linker scan in the doorway or something. So we'd be able to traverse or leapfrog our way through the rooms, but without needing to spend a ton of extra time on using or setting up targets and making sure our geometry is good and everything like that. So instead we're using what's called cloud to cloud registration for the process. With this same software you can identify checkerboard targets and still use those and assign it to a coordinate system if you need to. There are several other tools within this but the key thing is and a lot of people mention is the workflow is very intensive and it takes a long time and you got to have a lot of training and stuff but that's what I'm trying to highlight today is the workflow is always getting better. That's my job is to always work on that and make it more improved or improve it and make it something that you guys can if you do leap into this you're not going to have two to three weeks of training and things like that that may hinder you instead you hit the ground running so with this I say approve because it says 99.8 percent of my points are accurate within six millimeters on my data so it's able to merge 11 million points and 11 million points and be 99.8 percent uh, confident that those are registered together if you got a yellow light, that would indicate that we didn't have enough surfaces between the two scans to actually <coughs> merge them together properly. So what do we do? Typically, you'd have to bring targets back out and maybe even rescan because you took down your targets from before um, and you don't have points of reference. With this software, you just revisit the site and put one scan position right in the middle, right between those two positions, and then you're merging all three together. So it doesn't even if that scan was only used to link your other scans together because typically evidence might move because they collect everything clean everything up but the walls don't usually move and hard objects like uh, walls or partitions or so, stuff like that it doesn't move doesn't move and if it did move the software wouldn't use that anyways because it's not a like object between the two scans to to bring those together so we have basically two merged scans that we can then view as one single point cloud between the two. 
and I'll go to 3D preview here. And so this is basically the room and we're looking down into the room from the sky, essentially. So this is pure 3D here. So what I can do is actually zoom into the room and see the sphere location of where I was actually at when I scanned, and I can see the room that was collected as well. Of course, this is um, just a preview, so it's not even loading the full data, so it looks a little pixelated right now, but uh, at the same time, it gives you an idea that to make sure that everything was registered properly together. And then the last step is we go in and we index it. What indexing really is, is basically converting it to a format that we can then export. So right now it's preparing the data to send it to another software and start working with that. How am I doing on time? Kind of about done, huh? <laughs> okay, so the whole process here is basically um, collecting your scans, registering them, either using targets or not using targets, depending on the job site. If you're outside on a roadway or something like that, you'll obviously want to use targets. But that uh, just all depends on the specific application that you're using it for. Uh, if you're doing a crime scene, obviously this software would be way faster to work through that and stuff. And uh, that's my main goal today is to just at least show you guys the process um, because before, about a year ago or nine months ago, I couldn't do this live because the process would take too long. I'd need a couple hours to show you guys live and it would be like, let's sit down for a while for a half day or two, three hours and I'll show you the process. Uh, but now I can literally show it live in a half an hour process and, uh, and give people a real feel of what they actually are, are going to be doing. Um, on a day-to-day -day process with, with using a system like this. So once this is done indexing, I, one of the scans I can look at it basically, but uh, this of course depends on your machine, so I'll probably have to get a new machine that's not three years old just so that it speeds up this process for presentations and stuff. But uh, any questions so far on the workflow or any questions on targetry or cloud-to-cloud -cloud or scanner locations or uh, different types of scanners? Yes. Like on an inside location, like a two-story house. Yeah. And you have to do the whole house. Can you, will you be able to like do the bottom floor and put the scanner at the bottom of the stairs and then take it to the top, the first level of the stairs and scan that then go to like the, maybe the next level and they'll put all that into proper format? Absolutely. So the whole thing is you're like what I'm doing right now is I'm registering the scans together to create one point cloud for it all. So for a two story building, you want to do enough scan locations to basically merge your positions together to create one point cloud that represents the areas of interest. So once you've done that, then you take that whole point cloud. Uh, whether it's two scans or, or 20 scans, and you export that as a PTS file and bring it into the CAD zone software. So you're at that point, from that point on, you're basically working with one single point cloud versus you know 20 different uh, positions and di 20 different point clouds stuff. So <coughs> it really simplifies it at that point moving forward. Um, does that answer your question? Okay, there's another one back here, yes. On that list price that you quoted, does that include Uh No, uh, that's just for the scanner system, one battery, the case, chargers, stuff like that. Um, depending on what you need for targetry and stuff like that, like the sphere kit itself is about 2100 bucks for that for that sphere kit, and then you'd have to consider a tripod. The camera tripod itself is pretty close to the price that you'll see on the open market. It's about $1,300 for the carbon fiber uh, Gitzo camera tripod with the adapter on top. Um, if you're more comfortable with using surveyor tripods, uh, wood or fiberglass like Trimax or Neato or whatever you use, uh, then all you would need instead of a tripod, uh, camera tripod, is a, a tri brac adapter. So you get that tri brac adapter that fits the threading on the scanner and you just throw it in a normal tri brac in a normal tripod and use it that way. So a lot of people like to do that because they already have existing gear. It saves them, uh, you know, about $800 on that cost. And and then um, a lot of people, what they actually like to do for certain scenes outdoors is they actually put it on an elevating tripod. You actually saw uh, some pictures here earlier where they had cranked it up and had it at about 10 or 12 feet. That way you get better angle of attack on road surfaces and topography information and you're able to shoot at further distances using that. Um, 
So uh, all said and done, if you're looking at this scanner, it comes with two seats of training, Faro led training, so you can get certified basically with Faro. <coughs> I also help you with the workflow to make sure you're comfortable with the workflow to the end solution software, and that's all part of the purchase. Uh, it also comes with one year warranty as well, uh, so that covers part, parts and labors and also one calibration. So you can, at the end of one year, you can send it back and get calibrated all at no cost to you, except for maybe shipping there, and they pay for shipping back. And uh, then uh, with other accessories like spheres and maybe a tripod and stuff like that, you're still at about 48,000 after it's all said, maybe 49. If you're in Oregon, of course, no taxes, but Washington, then you tack on taxes as well. So, yes, sir. Uh, two questions. Does the Autodesk recap support viewing the model space from a BTS file? So if you could import, import into a, from a BTS file? Uh, you can import. From files, select a specific file. Here's all the formats. So you have FLS, FWS, which is Faro formats, all the Leica formats, PTG, PTS, PTX, LAS files from Aerial LiDAR or um, uh, converted point clouds. ASCII files is the simplest text. Um, of course, text file, TXT, XYZ, uh, RCP. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, quite a few different formats. So. This, okay, yeah, that's the other thing. So with workflows, I'm not as concerned about price as the workflow, the time that it saves you in order to do that. Unless it's like a $50,000 software, then I'd say forget it, it's not even feasible. This software itself, on November 15th, they're coming out with a price book for it. But what I've heard is it's gonna be more a year-to-year -year type payment to unlock the software for the next year or what have you. I don't know if they're gonna, how it's gonna be structured at all, but um, because I haven't seen the actual price book, and it's made by Autodesk, of course, but you're going to be looking right around three grand per year for the software. So, so they are going to year to year, and actually Autodesk themselves, if you guys know AutoCAD software, uh, Civil 3D, and um, Studio Max, the softwares like that, they're actually all kind of shifting to a more year to year bat, uh, where it's a medium sized price versus a high price and then maintenance costs uh, type thing. Yes? Uh, how many licenses does that cover? Like if you have a big agency uh -huh. where there are multiple work sites? It, it really depends on how do we need to set it up for you guys. So there's a free version of the recap that you can just install and view the data. But if you want to do the registration process, then you would need it, uh, to buy individual licenses, at least now. Once we get the price book, we'll see if they have network license uh, type setups to install on your servers, to check them out and stuff like that. But uh, that's something I can answer in about two weeks or a week and a half uh, with greater detail. So we could talk more later once, once I know. <laughs> So, yeah. The viewer software and this software, is it all 64-bit as well? Like the, uh... um, it's recommended. 64-bit is just way leaps and beyond uh, the other 32-bit. Uh, so it's, it'd be one of those things just like, just like what uh, um, the City of Federal Way guys were talking about, it'd be one of those things where you'd want to uh, just plan on getting a computer with the system as well, just because that's the easiest way to go. Uh, when you write it into the grant or wh however you acquire funds for it, uh, to actually plan to do a, a, a laptop to go with it as well. And then you know you have one that's kind of reserved for that. <laughs>